Hey guys, so it's Zach back again, and today Apple uh, just finished their September event that uh, they they had today, uh, and there were a few things that were kind of cool about this event. Um, no new phones, and that was something that was kind of expected because a lot of rumor sites were saying there is not going to be any new iPhones until probably October, um, but there was some interesting uh, announcements that happened at this event. Um, so they started off with the Apple Watch and uh, there's the new Series 6 watch. And uh, the big thing on this is it has blood oxygen detection, which is great for people like me who have asthma because you can now measure your blood, your blood oxygen level uh, right from home. And you don't have to go to a hospital and have that uh, sort of pad thing on your finger to do it. The watch can just do it for you which is really awesome and that means that it's accessible as well so you can use voiceover to read your blood oxygen level which is kind of cool um and aside from that uh the series 6 doesn't really have a ton that's new i mean there's a faster processor um uh, there are a few other little bits and pieces but for the most part it's pretty uh, you know, it's it's pretty standard, uh, but it's good. You know, the, this blood oxygen thing is a pretty huge step forward because there is no other device that's able to do that. As far as I'm aware, they're one of the first. Um, and uh, they also have a new Apple Watch SE, which is sort of a cheaper version of the watch. Um, it's like it's like the Series 3, just with a faster chip inside, and it's meant more for people that have never had an Apple Watch before, I don't really know if they'll like it, so it's a good way for people to sort of get into it. Um, and that's gonna be, I believe, $279. Um, and then if you wanna pay even less, you can get the Series 3 still for $199. Um, and then they also have a new fitness service. This is kind of cool. It's called, um, I believe it's called Apple Fitness Plus. And basically, it's just guided workouts. So you have a ton of workouts that you can pick from, and they're adding more every week, and they come with great music, apparently, um, from Apple Music. And uh, you can uh, use your watch, and what will happen is you can have it on your phone or your TV with the Apple TV or your iPad, and what, what, it'll, what it'll do is it'll show the workout, and the instructor will say what to do, and presumably these will be audio described as well, that we don't know about that, but I, I imagine it, they would be. Um, and then your watch will track all of your movements, and then you can see all of your movements right on the screen, which is kind of cool. So I don't know how that'll work with voiceover, but I assume what will probably happen is it'll tell you, okay, you're doing great, you're doing great, you know, keep going. Uh, you just uh, reached a, a move goal, or you just uh, reached an achievement or something like that. Um, so it's really cool. Um, and that's gonna be $9.99 per month, um, which isn't horrible. I feel like it's a bit much for a service like this. I don't, but I don't know, again, I don't know how much these other services cost. I bet it's probably a bit cheaper than maybe like something like Peloton or I, I don't really know. I, I, I'm not into these kind of fitness subscriptions, so I don't know um, what the pricing would be on that. But um, yeah, it's not horrible for what it offers. Um, and then, uh, and, and that'll be out later this year. It's not out yet, but it, uh, they said it'll be out later this fall. So presumably in October, maybe when the, the new phones launch, I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, and then uh, here's something kind of cool. Uh, they have an Apple One bundle, which basically allows you to combine subscriptions and then pay a bit less. Um, I was not too impressed with the pricing on this, to be honest with you. Um, Pretty much so for the basic you have like three packages. So for the basic package I, I think it's just called Apple one. I don't know what the terminology is for that one, but essentially you have um, uh, Apple TV plus you have Apple music and then you have Apple Arcade and then 50 gigabytes of iCloud storage and that's 1495 a month, which is actually pretty good however if you are completely blind I, and you're not, you don't, you don't, um, have family members that are on like a family sharing group with you. So if you're not using the same subscription, if you have your own personal device, your own Apple ID, your own everything, 
I don't really think that this is worth it because Apple Arcade is not accessible. Um, I, I think there are some games that work and I think they're improving it. I'm not 100%, but when it first came out, it wasn't really usable. And as far as I know, that hasn't changed too much. Uh, so I don't really think there's much value there for blind people right now. And then iCloud by itself, the 50 bucks is like 99 cents. So if you don't want Apple Arcade, you may as well just get Apple TV Plus and Apple Music, and that's already like 13 bucks or so. And then from there, you can just get the iCloud and you're essentially paying like the same price. So I don't really see why they felt the need to do this in this way. I think the prices could have come down just slightly more. Like for me, I'm not gonna get it because it's not gonna save me any money. Um, you know, just going by what I already use. You know, for me, I all I just use Apple Mu Apple Music and Apple TV Plus. So I'm actually paying a, a little bit less. Uh, this is the price of like an Audible membership. Um, and I mean, for 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 low vision people or for people that want Apple Arcade, that's fine. You know, it actually is a bit of a savings compared to if you were to buy them all separately, but it's not much. Um, and I, I was kind of disappointed. I was hoping the price could be a bit lower. Um, and then you have an Apple family one, which is like 20 bucks a month. And I think that gives you more iCloud storage and a couple other things. And then you have the premier package, which is 30 bucks a month, which, wow, that's, that's a lot of money. And that gives you basically all of the services. Um, Although for that price, that's actually pretty good in terms of all the stuff you're getting, but I still feel like there are ways to make that cheaper. You know, you don't need, and I don't really think a lot of people need all of the services. Like I don't need Apple News Plus, for example, and that's only in the premier package. So I'm honestly not 100% who this is, like I'm not sure who this is aimed at. Um, I don't really know who any, who would buy this, Maybe somebody who liked Arcade and liked um, the games that that offered and didn't want to pay the five or like four ninety nine a month for that. Maybe this is a solution, but I, I really don't know. This this kind of left me stumped. I was kind of excited about this when I, when I saw it in the rumors, but you know, it just turned out to be a, kind of a disappointment. So I won't be getting that, um, but it's cool. You know, if, if people like it, great. Um, and then moving on, we have the iPads. I don't currently have an iPad. Uh, I don't have a personal iPad and I don't use iPad OS at all, but um, there were some pretty good updates. Uh, they have uh, the, a, a new eighth generation iPad that's got the A12 chip from two years ago, uh, which is still really good. Uh, that's, I, I have an iPhone XR and that's the chip that's inside and it's still really good for, for what it does. Um, and uh, it, it's got a few other things. It's, it seems like it's kind of a minor, minor upgrade um, I, from what I could understand from the keynote. But again, I'll have to actually look at this in more detail. Um, and then we have the iPad Air. This is a pretty big deal. Um, so the iPad Air, the new iPad Air is um, got, it's a, I, it seems like it's redesigned. Um, it has a USB-C for the first time, which is pretty cool. So no more lightning on the iPad Air. Um, so you just can use your standard USB-C cables. And that's really cool because what you can do then is let's say you have a MacBook Pro and you have the USB-C to USB-A adapter. And let's say you're a musician or somebody who needs to connect external devices like a thumb drive that only support USB-A. Well, guess what you can do? You can take the USB-C adapter, you can plug it right into that iPad Air and then You've got your USB-A port. You plug like, so let's say like your MIDI keyboard into there. And guess what? You've got uh, a really cool studio type of setup on your iPad. Um, and if you need an audio interface, no problem. You can just get one of those USB hubs. Um, you can get like some USB-C hubs, I believe. And uh, you plug those in and then you can get your interface and your keyboard and you've got your speakers and everything you need and you can just make music right from your iPad, which is really cool. That's pretty exciting. Um, and then they have a new uh, chip. It's a new uh, A14 uh, Bionic, I believe it's called, chip. And uh, this is pretty impressive. They, they did a lot of work with this. Um, a lot of uh, upgrades to the process that it's, it's made out of. Apparently it defies some of the laws of physics. Uh, I don't know how true that is, but 
um, their tips are amazing regardless. So this should be interesting. Um, they have a lot of stuff with machine learning. Uh, it's able to do a lot more complex things. They had a demo where actually they were showing um, uh, this app called DJ Pro AI, which is like a DJ mixing app for people that uh, do uh, live DJing. And uh, apparently now you're able to, it's so powerful that you're able to actually scratch in midair. So you don't need to actually touch the display. You can kind of move your finger like above the display and you move it back and forth and it scratches, which is really sick. That's cool. And I think that's just the beginning. They're, they're gonna have a lot of fun things they're gonna be able to do with that. And that'll come to the iPhones too, hopefully. Um, I, I don't see why it wouldn't, so probably in October. Um, and that's about it. That's really it. There really wasn't a ton at this event. Um, a few other sort of bits and pieces towards the end. Uh, iOS 14 is coming out tomorrow, Wednesday. Get ready, guys. This kind of shocked me because normally what they do is they release uh, what's called a Gold Master version right before it drops, and that's just to make sure that everything is super stable and ready to go. Uh, they didn't do that. They didn't do that this time. And that's telling because this update is probably one of the biggest updates to iOS in a very long time. <laughs> so you would think that they would probably want to have a Gold Master right before, but I think they feel really confident. And from what I've been hearing, I don't have the beta, but from what I've been hearing, it's really stable. It works really well. So I'm not anticipating too many problems. I'm just gonna get ready and get myself prepared for tomorrow uh, when I have to update all of the devices in this house. Uh, so that's gonna be fun. Um, uh, so iOS 14 is coming out tomorrow. iPad OS 14 is coming out tomorrow. Watch OS 7 is coming out tomorrow and TV OS 14 is coming out tomorrow. Uh, Mac OS 11 is not coming out tomorrow. That'll probably come out a little bit later. I'd imagine uh, two weeks, maybe? We'll see. Um, I'm not too worried about Mac OS 11 right now. It's it's a huge update, don't get me wrong, but I'm not going to update it right away because I'm in, I'm in college and uh, now I actually need my computer to do like critical work. So uh, normally I do update immediately, but I think this year anyway, probably for the next couple of years until I graduate, I'm going to hold off a little bit, just until I have a break, like in December, and then I'll update. And then from there, I'll be able to make sure that everything works and I'll have time before I have to go back to school again to make sure that everything is perfect. Um, so that's gonna be exciting as well. Um, but so iOS 14 and all of that is coming out tomorrow. Um, I want to do some videos on 14 because there are some big things. Um, I don't know so much for musicians. I know that's kind of the main point of this channel, but I think because this update is so fundamentally new that it's important to do some videos. Those will probably come out this weekend. I'm hoping to get the update tomorrow. Uh, I, I should get it tomorrow uh, immediately when it comes out. Um, you know, a few hours after, uh, and I'll play with it for a few days and get used to it. And then from there, what we'll do is I will make some videos for you guys on, uh, some of the new features. Um, so that should be exciting. Um, yeah, you know, that's kind of it. Uh, the keynote was not, I, I don't, I wouldn't say it was underwhelming, but I wasn't too surprised. <laughs> from all of the leaks and stuff that came out, I really do wish that kind of stuff would stop because it's just sort of spoiling the surprise at this point. I think if there weren't so many leaks and I was looking at this from a completely new, like a, a neutral angle, I didn't know what they were gonna do, I probably would have been a bit more enthused. But I think overall, uh, this was still good. Um, you know, I, I would say this is a great step in the right direction. The blood oxygen stuff on the watch is huge. That's like a big thing. Um, but overall, not too impressed. But I think, you know, that's to be expected right now because of everything that's going on in the world right now and uh, the iPhones are being a bit delayed. You know, this is just something to sort of hold you over until the iPhones come out. And that's pointing to be a pretty, a pretty big deal. Um, they seem to be getting redesigned. I'm not sure, you know, what the deal is there, but we'll have to see. 
Um, one quick thing to you before we end for today. Uh, the event, this was cool. This is a new thing that Apple is doing. I hope this continues in the future, and I think it will, hopefully. Uh, the event was audio described for the first time, live. Uh, they have, for the past couple of events, starting with the September event last year, had description for the keynote after the fact. So, like, they'll post the video, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll do the live video, and that won't have any description. But then after the video is published, they will have a description like a few hours after, usually, or like a day. So that's really exciting. But now you can also have the description live. So if you want to watch it live, and then you don't want to have to watch it after with the description, although that is fun sometimes, uh, now it's, it's just described right off the bat live, which is great. That was really cool to see. Um, and that gave a lot more context this time around. And I've been watching these for about six or seven years. And this is the first time where I've really felt like a part of the whole thing. I mean, they've always been pretty accessible just by design because it's just talking. There aren't too many visuals. But the stuff that you do miss out on sometimes is kind of funny. Uh, so it's cool to see that that is all uh, described for you now. And it gives you a little bit of a, a better picture of what these devices actually look like. Not much because you can't actually feel them and see what they look like, but still it, it helps me to sort of understand, uh, you know, what everyone is so excited about. Um, so that was really cool. I hope they continue to do that. That's a big, big, big thumbs up from me. So again, overall, event was good. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited for, for the stuff that's coming. Um, I would not get any of these products today. Um, you know, I'm waiting on the phone because my phone is getting on two years old now. So I'm waiting on that to maybe upgrade. We'll see. Uh, but you know, this is a great thing to do to hold over and I'm really excited for 14. That's, that's the most exciting thing from this event. Ironically is it's 14 coming out tomorrow. That's what I've really been looking forward to because this update is huge. Um, and uh, actually, you know what I'll do? Later on today, I'll do a video where I sort of talk about what's coming in 14. I, I did a WWDC video a few months ago, but I wanna kind of reiterate and sort of get everyone ready for 14, get everyone prepared. So later on, probably today or like maybe like early tomorrow, but hopefully today, I'll have a video uh, about 14 and kind of talking about uh, what's new, what's coming, especially for voiceover um, and sort of what we can expect. Because now we do know a lot more about how some of this stuff is gonna work. So um, I'd be more than happy to do that. So in the meantime, uh, look out for that, it's coming soon. And uh, look out for some iOS 14 related videos and, and content uh, soon. And uh, until then, I will see you guys next time.